beep, 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 A Radio Step Zero broadcast. Praetor 7, what's up? It's been a long time, or at least it feels like a long time, but five days or five days or something like that, whatever it was, I, uh, I've i been away, I've been sleeping in hibernation, partly to conserve some time and partly because I've been busy, I've been not like busy, like ugh, I'm too busy for you guys, we got, we got a nine, eight week old puppy. And that guy, he likes to just try to gnaw and nibble on absolutely anything. And he's sleeping, then he's up and running around, then he's sleeping and and uh, screaming in his crate. We're getting him used to that. But it has been a whirlwind past few days. I mean, throwing Thanksgiving on into it uh, as well seems to, um, you know, seems to factor into that, but... But uh, it, we're back. I'm back. I've been I've been just dying to do a draw stream, and um, and here I am because it, it was for a little while. It was a a um, regular thing. It was a kind of almost like a great way to close out my night, and then I couldn't do that for a few days, and it was just like it's kind of killing me a little bit. I'd, I'd get to I'd just sketch tiny little things. But uh, it wasn't quite like being able to just get on the stream, do some drawing and some talking. Not talking and drawing, that's Shane Davis's thing. Um, but it's it's nice to be able to... <laughs> we get it, he says, you have a life. Yeah, 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 but but see, that's the thing. Like, drawing drawing's a healthy part of my life, and I, I love to draw. And I feel, I, you know, my wife... She feels like, you know, her day is not complete without, you know, like a workout. And I, I feel very much that way without, you know, drawing in some way, shape or form. It just feels like, you know, you, you're you're a little restless. You gotta, you gotta get a drawing out or something like that. So, so I'm happy to be here. Happy to be hanging out with whoever comes into the, uh, the old nest here. And happy for those people that are going to watch on replay. Uh, and I've been busy, uh, speaking of busy, I've got a possible one-off show coming on Saturday, which I, I, you might know, but I can just, I can just, uh, say this for the, uh, for the replay crowd here. Um, the chit, the chit, it's in chit chat because I wasn't there on the chat last, last week and and uh, I thought I'd make it up because they're going to be on hiatus. Maybe one or two of them possibly could visit. I don't know on the chip. But uh, I uh, I wanted to make it up. So I know I'm not going to be in any kind of a, a uh, hiatus come tomorrow. So at the regular time, at the regular time, um, I'm going to have a, a show myself. And it won't be quite like this show. I don't think I'll be drawing or anything like that. I'll uh, I'll have some stuff to talk about, just like, you know, like, like the chat does. Um, on Twitter, on X, go and give it to you, as Vanessa would say. I have four polls up, four of them, to, um, for people to answer. And we are going to go over those, just like the old days, just like when I started out, when I would when I would put a bunch of polls up or poll, and I would we would answer that stuff. Um, see, here we go. If you look at here, we've got. Uh, are you more interested in YouTube or in comics? Praetor Seven says he's going to check it out. I appreciate that. Uh, we got. Uh, are you a fan of YouTube show hiatuses? 
what really is the best thread count of sheets? <laughs> That's, you know, our, our own little in-joke. In oh, shoot, we're tied. 100 count sandpaper <laughs> and 400 or 400 plus. And then uh, what would drive you away from Indie Comics? Um, oh, and then, of course, I put this bonus one in there. What is the best meme from uh, from the show, The Chat, right? So others it could be uh, Amanda Sheets, but I, I gave that one pretty much its own kind of wink here. So I didn't feel the need to put it in there. But there are others and those those can be, you know, talked about and put in the comments and everything. Actually, I think the only two in the comments are Amanda's <laughs> Sheets. <laughs> so, um, yes. So we'll get to talk about that. Um sort of put my show notes or topics right on on uh, display for all of you guys. Uh, so that's going to be fun. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I created an intro, a new intro. What? Apparently I wasn't already following you on X. Praetor7 says, well, that's okay. If you don't want to follow me, you don't have to, man. If you want to, just go ahead and click follow. That's fine. Um... But, uh, yes, I am going to, I'm going to do that show. I, I've been joking about that in the back rooms, in the, in the chat back rooms, the writer's room for a long, long time about how I'll just make a show called The Chit and I'll chit talk and it'll be a chit show and I'll have a bunch of fans that I'll get to call chit heads <laughs> and they'll love it. And everybody will be chitty. Yeah. It was always a joke until... Until, like, last week when I thought, you know, like, we've been joking about it for so dang long. I might as well... I might as well do it. So, that's... It's gonna be fun. So, I've got that. And then on Monday, I'm talking again to... Robert Geronimo about, uh, you know, like the, uh, the campaign, the merch, the latest Blood Realm issue, having him back because that was a friggin' delight having him on. Um, so we'll, we'll sit and we'll chat art, and comics and stuff like that once again, maybe movies. I don't know. I don't know. You can never tell with those things, but I'm excited about it. I don't mind telling you. Uh, three people watching. Hello. Hello. Praetor 7 and Lurkers, it's always great to have you. does not matter if you make yourself known in the chat or not. It's not that kind of show. It's, it's a show where if you just want to kind of listen and zone out or, or draw and listen or do your taxes and listen or whatever. That's, that's okay. That's what we're here for. Or we. I am here for. Listen to me talking in third person like I'm some sort of business. I'm a business man. If, I, if that were anybody, it'd have to be Noah. I believe he said he is a top G, which I believe all top Gs are good business men. We'll see. Praetor7 says, I started reading the question because I got the omnibus. Buddy, let me tell you something. It's books like that. It's books, books like those that put DC above Marvel in my estimation, in my, in my uh, views. They had more variety in their stories marvel had lots of superheroes they had they had stuff here and there i mean you know, they had werewolf by night and morbius and stuff but those those monsters always kind of with the exception of maybe the living mummy or uh the zombie they always seemed like heroes right they always seemed like superheroes um dracula in in his own way seem I, although i did like you know the tomb of dracula um, but like you did the question, you had Batman, you had Superman, you had the sci-fi stuff like Green Lantern, Flash. You had all those like anthology books like Ghost and House of Mystery, House of Secrets, Jonah Hex, uh, Weird War Tales, Tales of the Unexpected. The question, um, you had, you know, like those, those cool like crime type things. <laughs> I'm second uh, issue in and it's already more serious and mature than I, I would have expected. Yeah, I that one. And, you know, you had stuff like Phantom Stranger. The Swamp Thing stuff from Alan Moore got super heavy and serious. And then, of course, you had Vertigo. Pretty much everything from Vertigo was like very, you know, what? Fables, Hellblazer, uh, Sandman, uh, Sandman Mystery Theater. 
that stuff. It, DC just had so much more of a variety in my eyes. There was a lot of great stuff from Marvel. But after I hit high school, middle school, high school, or whatever like that, I switched to DC and I just I didn't really look back. Marvel had, still had some good stuff. I mean, you had like Planet Hulk. I got into the the Loeb uh, McGinnis Hulk run. That was great. Although I liked them from Superman. You know what I mean? Like, like um, I followed them over from Superman. But uh, but I was yeah, I was solid. Green Lantern was going at the time, you know, and whatnot with uh, with Jeff Johns. I was solidly a, a, a DC guy. Citizen Ronan, welcome, welcome to the nest. It's good to see you again. Um, and I still, you know, I, I, if DC were to get back on track, I would, I would truly consider that like a, a wonderful thing because I, the stories that can be told with those superheroes, Batman, Superman, Green Lantern, the Justice League, and and the myriad of C, D, E list characters that are amazing, not unlike the question. Um, it, it just, it's it's a crime to let characters that good go to waste. You know? It's a crime. So, so yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a, unabashedly, I love my DC. Uh, and I'm buying reprints. They're putting those compendiums out, and you know you can't go wrong for like a $45 trade for like a thousand pages huge runs they're gonna they're gonna do the Chuck Dixon both Robin and uh, Nightwing stuff next year door stoppers it's awesome um, that's not to say you know like I'm going to give up on on crowdfunding because there's there's not only are there some great new artists that you know deserve that chance in that audience but there's also some really great properties and stuff too Prater 7 says one thing I'm not sure how I feel about it, when a normal superhero makes a cameo in the books like the question I almost prefer picturing the question happening in real life if that makes sense oh it does it absolutely does you know I used to think about that with like Dracula the tomb of Dracula when like the silver surfer would show up it felt so out of place same with the Punisher Punisher was um you know, you had like the two kinds of Punisher. You had the trench coat Punisher and the white glove Punisher. And um, and uh, the, the white glove guy was like, you know, he'd be around the heroes a little bit more. But usually he was still kind of by himself. And then there was the, uh, the trench coat Punisher, which was like your Garth Ennis type stuff. No superheroes around because that guy couldn't, that guy couldn't exist with heroes. Captain America would probably bring that dude in. <laughs> You know himself he'd be like maybe this isn't so good um somebody would have stopped it but i mean like when he would show up with heroes and stuff sometimes it it seemed really really weird um unless you had something like wolverine you know like those those mini series he did with wolverine there was that one that where wolverine had just the most wild hair you ever saw like uh which one was it It was called, I know I'll get the covers in a second here. It was called, uh, Damaging Evidence. Huh? You probably remember this, uh, you, you far back comic book fans. It was, uh, from, who, who did this? I'm not 100% sure, but but like Wolverine had he had the hair going. There wasn't any of this this wolf, you know, Wolfman Jack type stuff. Wolverine he had this almost looks like a, a younger um, uh, Eric Roberts <laughs> right here <laughs> as the Punisher. But uh, yeah, Wolverine just had this ridiculously long hair. You know, nothing, something that never would have possibly fit under his mask. But um, it was a three-part kind of deal. Pretty good stuff. I think that was... I remember seeing that. My brother, I want to say, had the entire... I mean, yeah, different, very different hair. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, I mean, unless he, he kind of went with somebody like that... It always felt really out of place for the Punisher... Yeah, Sister Rona says metal hair. 
Um, and a lot of those street... I mean, Daredevil could kind of get away with it a little bit more because he had more power, but I mean, like, beyond Spider-Man, it was kind of weird to see him kind of doing stuff with heroes, too. I thought, personally. Um... I, maybe that's why Marvel Knights was launched, you know, so they could get those guys doing stuff together that didn't seem really weird and and uh, out of place. But um, that's a character. Uh, it'll be kind of cool to see develop, like uh, you know, the ones that like Phil uh, Phil Diaz, you know, the silhouette and stuff like that. He can get into some some uh some cool pulp kind of stories like that something like the question or like the spirit or like the shadow you know um he could probably he could probably have a great time writing stuff like that remember that mini series praetor 7 says with wolverine and havoc i thought you meant that hair uh let's see it's meltdown i guess no mini series Oh, it must be Meltdown if, if you're thinking. So Senkowitz covers, it looks like. Yeah, I remember. I remember this this mini series. If if this is the one you're thinking of, Walt Simonson, Louis Simonson, Kent Williams. Um, the whole thing was painted. I don't know if you're talking about this one here. Um, the whole thing was painted. Yeah, Meltdown, right there. It's really cool. Really cool looking stuff. Very, very European, I think, in its approach. Um, which is cool. I've, I've grown a brand new love and uh, appreciation for like painted European novels, like graphic albums and stuff like that, especially like watercolor. It's just, it brings a whole new like, like uh, texture and, and difference to, to the book. Kent Williams Wolverine was hair is crazy, yeah. Yeah. So let's see here. You know what? Maybe what I'll do, I'll, you know, maybe I'll show you guys a little something. Since there's a few of in here, there's four people in here. Two of you are talking to me. I'm gonna show you guys between you and me and the wall here. This is the uh this is the intro for the chit that I, I cooked up real fast. Tell me what you think. Here we go. Beep, 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 beep. A Radio Stat Zero broadcast. Whoa, whoa, hold on. That's not what the show is. Let's go get it. Jeremy Birch and A-Line, welcome, welcome to the show. You must be very confused. Tomorrow I'm hosting the chit. It may be a one-off show. It's a, it's taking place during the hiatus for the chat. And that was the intro that I uh, that I came up with. Yeah. So that's that's setting a very different vibe for the show, I think. Oh, thanks. See, Citizen Rona loves it. Stats making professional level. <laughs> Thank you, but I would. Oh, geez, I'd say it was, it was very far from that. But it's a lot of fun to make. I had a big smile on my face the entire time I was making it. Um, just kind of interrupting the chat one like that. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna go any much further. Um, I'm not looking to like take any real estate or like alternate or take their time slot or anything like that. I respect them way too much. It's uh, it was just one of those things where I was going to stream anyways. So I thought we'd make a joke out of it because we're always joking about it in the back room about like, oh, yeah, now I'm going to have to make the chit. And they're like, yeah, make the chit. So what can I say? Chit happens. 
It's better than the PBS level intros. Oh man, the kind that that are uh, paid for by viewers like you. Sweet. It was fun. Yeah, I was going through the 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 free YouTube music you can use to for uh, YouTube videos and stuff like that, and that that song popped out. It's called what was it like? Tiptoe out the back. <laughs> Worked really really well for what I uh, what I had in mind. So that'll be a fun, that'll be a fun one. It'll be a classic, like, go over some polls, maybe talk some comics, see what the uh, chat actually thinks about this stuff. Um, you know, all their opinions are welcome. I'm not going to shut anybody down. Like, sort of. Hopefully it won't be a chit show, uh, Citizen Rona says. Actually, I feel like I, I, I think it will be. I think there's going to be possibly, I don't know if there's going to be some chit talking. Definitely some chit heads in the, in the chat for sure. Absolute sure. Um, but that's all right because that's what we want. We want to have fun. If we got to have a substitute show for the chat, which we know the chat's awesome. We got to, got to have fun. Got to have some fun. That's what I say. But will it be, like, positive, encouraging? I don't know. I don't know if it will. Oh, the chit jokes are definitely going to fly. No no way no way they can't. It's half the fun. You got to get in that chat and be chitty. But, you know, still going to be. I mean, it's me running the show, so it's not going to be, like, crazy raunchy or anything like that. <laughs> I mean, I got, I still got, I still got my reputation to keep. Can't be, I can't be doing one of those like mini Jack shows or whatever like that. That's just, that's just not my style. You know what I mean? Not my style. Heck, it's none of our style. That's why I think the people in the chat work so dang well together because none of us are None of us are really looking to um, screw other people over for views and for uh, subs. None of us are looking to get rich quick. And, uh, you know, we're all just kind of wanting to have a lot of fun. I think that's why that group clicks. Um, I, I've hanging out with them for a year and I have never, ever gotten the inclination that one of them, any of them were going to like try to screw me over for anything like that. It just, I don't feel like it. Can I get chit on my phone? Well, you should be able to. You can watch the stream on your phone. I mean, it's a, it's it's uh, it's it's a chit signal for sure. Roma says classy, not like Vanessa level. Oh, she's she's way above me. She got that class. I'm just, you know, just a chitty bird, chitty chitty bird bird. coming tomorrow. We're going to have some fun. I've been wanting to, to do something a little bit differently for a little while. It's just a one off kind of thing. I got my random draw streams, which I love, and I got my zero visibility for, you know, when I have guests or something like that. And So I, I think I'm pretty good as far as like variety here <laughs> yeah it's you know what I would call I would call this channel reliable in terms of like there's not going to be a lot of changing and uh, what I do, and, and I'm not looking to, 
outdo myself, which I know that's kind of like what you're supposed to. It's, it's more maintain, right? It's, it's it's something that you can come back to um, even when all the rest of your shows have changed. Um, you can come back to this and know it's kind of going to be a little bit consistent. You know, that's what I'm looking for. Consistency. I wanted to be able to to have a, a thing where, you know, you you can like the show and it, it doesn't. You know what? A lot of shows seem to do that. Like they change with popularity. And I suppose maybe it's a good thing so people don't get bored, I guess. But I mean, like for me, I would think like if you get yourself a, sh a show and hey, it's it's Kenneth Roquefort. Welcome, welcome to the nest. Um, if you get yourself a show and people like it and you get popular on that show, why would you change the formula? I don't get it. You'd want to you want to stay that way for the people that that come aboard. You know what I mean? At least I would. And he nailed it. The shadow. We just draw in the shadow tonight for fun. Because that's what we do. But I, th I think that I would probably go ahead and stick stick to what I do and, you know, let the people that like this kind of thing find me. And then, you know, we could just hang out and talk together. That's what I think. Hello there. Uh, the uh, sis, Rona sis, the chat though. Um, NTM Comics, no, welcome, welcome to the nest. Phil trolled me once when I asked him about the shadow. He told me he kn his nose could smell out crime and I <laughs> believed him. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Yeah. That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I used to listen. I think I still have like, I got to have at least like uh, 30 shadow, old shadow radio shows. And they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. They don't, you know, they don't make that kind of thing anymore. Those kind of shows. Um, and I feel like if the shadow were revived, it wouldn't work unless you kept it in a, uh, you know, like a 30 setting. The movie tried really hard and it got some cool points in there, but it, it just didn't quite hit the mark trying to give him like just straight up superpowers. He doesn't need them. Yeah, I remember seeing the uh, Predator 7 says, I remember seeing the Shadow movie as a kid and it was confused as why his nose was like that. What evil, evil lurks in the odor of men? The Shadow knows. <laughs> it's all in how you spell it. Um, but yeah, I, I saw that. I was a great age. You see, the movie's not amazing, but I was a really great age when that movie came out. Um, and so there is a just a twinge of nostalgia you know you ever have that where you have like a, a movie that's not very good it sucks as a matter of fact not to put a too fine a point on it but you you still can't help but really like it because you know you were alive at just that right time to you know just really get the uh the full effect of it the shadow is one of those movies for me as i as i grew up and i found you know like well this isn't like the shadow at all uh you know they screwed up so much just being like, oh, he's a superhero, right? He needs superpowers. Um, it's still kind of a fun movie. And I think compared to stuff today, it really stands out. Because, I mean, the, the 90s were a really great time for that. Like, you had all those pulp movies. And I have them all. They're great. Um, oh, yeah, the sword and the sorcerer, <laughs> right? Uh, for Citizen Ronin. I have uh, a lot of them. I've got uh, The Phantom. Great freaking adventure movie. And it was hammy. It knew exactly what it was. And uh, Treat Williams was a friggin' joy in that movie. You had The Shadow. You had Dick Tracy. All the star talent in that movie. Holy crap. And it still looks visually like striking with it all the four color format. Um, and you had um, you had The Rocketeer. 
movies aged like a fine wine. It's still awesome to this day. Um, geez, did you have any other ones? I thought they're well. Anyways, you know they all came off the Batman thing. It was like we could we could probably do something with these pulp heroes. Um, and uh, and I I loved every one of them. You know that that was a cool time where comic book movies. They, they might not have been very good, but they swung for the fences every time. And each one was different than the last. You know, you could take a, a still of any of those movies and be able to say, that's Dick Tracy. 100%. 10 out of 10 times. That's The Shadow. That's The Rocketeer. Like, you you just knew. Because they were vis visually different. All of them. Well, I mean, you know, some of them. The Shadow, I think, looked the most like Tim Burton's Batman. The first one. But... Uh, you know, that was, they had some good dialogue. I had some fun dialogue in there. I liked it. Reminds me of that scene with Margot Lane where she's like, oh, I was on a beach and I dreamed and the sun was beating down on me and I loved it. And he's like, I dreamed too. What was that? I dreamed I was someone else and I pulled all my face off. Oh, you're very disturbed. Yes, I know. <laughs> it was, it was, it was fun, but not a great movie. I'd probably put, if I had to rank them, I'd probably say that The Rocketeer was my favorite. Then then The Phantom. Then, oh, you know, I'm forgetting Zorro. The, the Mask of Zorro. That was a really great movie with uh, Antonio Banderas. I had a lot of fun with it. So I'd say probably, uh, so I'd say The Rocketeer was my favorite. Then, maybe The Mask of Zorro, just because... Because they, they it felt a little bit more complete, and um, the Phantom had had a cool setup, but it never got to p see that pay off. Still a great movie, and I probably put the Shadow uh, at the bottom of the pack. Although I liked it a lot, Dick Tracy might just edge it out. Although I wasn't a fan of Madonna in that movie, I, not a fan of Madonna in that movie. Still a lot of fun. Um, Yeah, I, I feel like I gotta watch those again. Those old pulp adventure movies. Zorro, The Mask of Zorro was a lot of... I really liked that movie. And uh, the sequel wasn't bad either, even though it was kind of made more for kids. I think... Still a lot of fun in my in my book. Citizen Ronan loves Darkman. Yeah! The whole trilogy was, wasn't too bad. I mean, you know, you had uh, Arnold Volslu take take uh, the role after Liam Neeson and uh, two pretty decent straight to DVD, straight to TV movies. Crater 7 says, I love, loved Rocketeer. Couldn't stand the fan Phantom. Wonder why, why is that, Praetor 7? Why didn't you like the Phantom? You know, it's, it's for some, it's a guilty pleasure. I know Chuck Dixon really, really loves it. Chuck and Graham both call that movie perfection. Um, and that was like Chuck Dixon also loves the movie Congo. A lot of people hate that movie. With uh, Amy, good gorilla, Amy, bad gorilla, go away. You, know, you remember like like the uh, the Mike Crichton one with with um, Tim Curry, um, but uh, he he calls that his guilty well not guilty pleasure, but he loves that movie. It's pretty funny. Um, but uh, come to think of it, I think I was the I was the right age for that movie too. Congo when it came out, I remember the trailer and just being hyped came out around the same time as like Judge Dredd with Stallone which it's as a Judge Dredd movie is not great as a Stallone movie I like to think of it as like a a sequel to um I don't remember if it came out before or after Demolition Man but I, I feel like it's definitely in the same world John Spartan just grew up and or woke up and became became Judge Dredd that's what happened because <laughs> it feels more like a, a, uh, a Demolition Man movie than it does Judge Dredd you know Yeah. That it does. Darkman was pretty crazy. I know, I, if I remember right, Sam Raimi wanted to make the shadow and he could not get the rights, so he just created his own superhero. Uh, and it felt very much like the shadow. I would have loved to have seen him do a shadow movie. Maybe if he tries, he can still get. I wonder who's got the rights. 
because maybe he could get a, a remake. Finally do his own version with like a little bit more of a budget because he's Sam Raimi now, you know? That would be wild. But I have no idea where the shadow rights are at all. Praetor7 says, not sure why I didn't like the Phantom. I think I have problems with the costume. Yeah, with the with like the print on it and stuff like that. I think Billy Zane was just so dang likable in there and he knew exactly like what kind of a movie he was making. So did Treat Williams as far as like the bad guy, almost serial type bad guy where he, he played it up a little bit. Like that scene where, you know, he had the guy look in the, the uh, magnifying glass and it says you lied and the guy's eyes are cut out and whatnot. Um, it felt, and then, you know, there's there's like freaking pirates out of nowhere and you had Her Kerry Hayoga Dagawa in there just doing awesome work it was it had everything you know and he just pulls his guns out and sharks there's that great scene where the horse and the dog you know like the horse like neighs and the dog barks and they go racing off to to save the phantom kitten that girl when they jumped out of the plane real stunt by the way they jumped out of the plane onto the horse and uh and you know you got to see that that was friggin great that might have been a better stunt than any of those movies really had uh, Citizen Rana says, uh, speaking of Crichton, I watched the Andromeda Strain recently. Great movie. I don't think I've seen it. Interesting. I should have a look. Um, I showed my wife all those movies, and she, she got a pretty good kick out of them. I, she, yeah, she liked The Phantom. She, I think Dick Tracy would have been at the bottom of her list. She liked The, the Shadow okay. She really liked The Rocketeer. So, you know, there's, there's that. So I'm... Uh, yeah, it's, I feel like I gotta watch those again because they're they're pretty great. Yeah. Hmm. What do we got? Thirty-seven minutes. Beautiful. I should, you know, I wish they would they would they would re-release some Shadow comics. I wonder what in where he is. Who owns the shadow right now? You know, like, let me, let me, I wonder if we could find out, do some detective work. Uh, I knew they, didn't they do that, that comic? Let's see, uh, Prater 7 says, looking back, I can see the Phantom is basically the same kind of movie as the Rocketeer and the Shadow, so it's weird that I didn't also like the Phantom. Hey, Henry Bemis, welcome, welcome to the nest. I am drawing the shadow, which is having fun. I didn't, I didn't set out to draw the shadow. It just started to turn that way, and, and I'm okay with it. Um, yeah, Praetor Seven. You know, I'll tell you what. I remember, you know, liking the shadow, but or the, you know, the the uh, the Phantom. Uh, but then when I went back and I watched it as an adult, I mean, really, really watched it and saw what they were going for. It makes it so much better. I think at the time when it came out, people were expecting something different. Um, but when you look back on it, I, I do think that that uh, it aged extremely well. Really, it did. Uh, let's see. Radio programmed, radio drama, Margot Lane comic strip. Got the Shadow comic strip. Ooh, if they got comic strip collections of the Shadow, I got to find it. Uh, films... No, Shadow 94. Yep, Unmade Ram Sam Raimi. Video games. Unreleased. Television. Influences. Superhero media. I have no idea. Uh, the claim Kondé 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 Nast owns anything to do with the Shadow and their claim is based on the acquisition of the old Streeter and Smith Company of the radio scripts came with it. So this Condé Nast owns the rights to the Shadow. Increased their licensing fee. DC concluded the series after 31 issues in an anim annual. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. They published Smith and Street. Righty Wall with the Gibson. Uh, so they're just holding on to it. They said, like, you want that Shadow? You're going to have to pay some money, money. Yeah, there's a Shadow comic in the 40s. There's a comic strip. DC did one. I thought there was a Dynamite one for a little bit. But, uh, you know, obviously, like, if they if they increase the, the rates, 
then you know nobody wants to pay them so they're just holding on to a property that really nobody wants it's a it's a great property that nobody really wants to deal with because it's so expensive i think that might be the case might be the case huh interesting who would have thought Kenneth says he did a cover for Dynamite. Now we're back to we're back to uh, Google. Let me have a look here. What the heck? Is this it? I think it is. Well, that's friggin' cool. Long time ago, he says. It doesn't matter. Ken broke for it. Ken broke for it. And we got to show it off. Look at this. Look at this. This is nice. <laughs> I like that. I got it. It's right here. Pray to seven says, pull it up. Pull it up. Here it is. That's great. Wonder if the book was any good. Got to be disappointed. Get this. Get this great cover and you open it up and the book art's not as good. Hmm. Prado 7 says, I think Dynamite has been publishing The Shadow lately. Okay. And that's uh, that's basically Year uh, One by Howard Chaikin is awesome. Okay. Very nice. I like that. That's cool. Nice. I love the smoke and red, Prado 7 says. Now I have to add another comic to my eBay list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there we go. One more. That's the shadow number one. Freaking cool. Freaking cool. Love it. The thought plickens. We find more. We find more Roka for it. All right. Ain't nobody mad at that. Maybe we gotta add a scarf. I feel like maybe, maybe we do that. There's actually a uh, year one by Garth Ennis that's really good too, in my opinion. Oh, cool. No pressure stat. Yeah, thanks a lot, Citizen Ronan. Thank you now. Now I'm crumbling. <laughs> no, it's it's cool. I know I'm not, I'm not gonna try to compete with, uh, with that Roka Fort. All I can do, all I can do is try to entertain him with the show. That's that's what I do. That's my job. He comes in here, I entertain. While he works or while he just relaxes. That's I know my job. I know my <laughs> I know my place. <laughs> just a cartoonist. A cartoon. Draw his scarf like a spawn cape. Oh shoot, you know, if that's the case, we gotta be going like Oh, this way, and like it's got to go this way, and then it's got to peek through here, and it's got to go around like that. I don't know. I don't know if the shadow ever had a spawn cape scarf. <laughs> it's almost going to be a western. I was doing like a western stat, you know, and then I was just like, you know what? I think I'll just draw the shadow. It sounds fun. I got to do a better job one of these days, something a little more, more serious. But, uh, you know, these, you know, these, these one take. These one take sketches for you guys. <laughs> Not a lot of thought goes into them. And it's just, it's flexing a muscle, you know, you, uh, you learn to concentrate and talk at the same time. Actually, what if his scarf was made of shadows? That would be really. That's like one of those those questions that you you almost have to ask, like, like when you're uh, you're uh, you're like super stoned. You ever see that movie Four Rooms where where he's talking to uh, to um, the pothead, and he's like, "I was screwed by a uh, coven of witches," and she's like, "You were f by a coven of witches." He's like, "No." <laughs> 
I can't remember. I can't remember the exact. It's been a while since I've seen that, but it, it kind of reminds me. And Henry Beeman says, "Is the Shadow's hat supposed to be a fedora?" Even the old comics, uh, it felt really wide, wide brim. Yeah, I, I think it's drawn differently. Like I remember Scotty Young just getting really, really big with it, and it was like like this. And you know how he draws with shapes, like that. I can draw. Kenneth, let me tell you something. You are, I think. He says he can't do that, but you are the only artist that I have ever seen or known that can have like 30 people in a chat watching with no music, no commentary, no nothing. Just you in the paper drawing and you are good enough where that is all you really need. You don't need talking. I got to distract people. That's, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> you start drawing and people just start paying attention. That is a gift, sir. That is that, that is truly something I, I and I've said it before. I'm a fan of your draw streams. I like I like watching them. I like having them on the background, and I like toning and drawing pages and stuff to them. It's kind of comforting. Um, so yeah, you don't need to worry about that. Your show is perfect as it is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, you are right. It would be probably a fedora. I just I just elongated it a little bit. We can always see what it looks like smaller. All I have to do is this. Now it looks weird, like like some sort of a. I mean, you know, we could we could give him like something different, right? We could give him like a sombrero. Yeah, like that. And he could be like, "You're very very welcome, Kenneth." Of course, anytime. I'd be happy to sing your praises. Tell people about it. I'm just sorry that I got away from comics when you were like when when you were becoming more and more known. I'd walked away for about ten years from about 2012, maybe eight years to 2019, I think. So I hadn't seen some of your some of your best work. Here I was thinking like, well, comics just aren't for me anymore. I'm not seeing a whole lot that I love. Uh, I guess I'll just uh, take a break. And then I come back in, and there's people like, oh, this Ken broke for. He's really great. And I'm like, who the heck is that? I found out. Prado 7 says, what if his hat was made of shadows? <laughs> That's good. They say <laughs> they say uh, great jokes in comedy come in threes. You ever watch those movies and they have like they have like, you know, the two attempts at the joke and then the third one is the payoff because it happened three times. Yeah. <laughs> Give him a yamaka, man. It says, "Hello, Amanda. Welcome, welcome to the chat." Yamaka. There you go. It'll be like Phantom International. You'll have all like Batman International. What if his shadows were made of shadows? You know, it's starting to get like Otto from uh, from The Simpsons. Like, whoa! What if his shadows were made of shadow? Or 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 Snake. Remember Snake? What if his shadows were made of shadow, dude? Yeah. Give me your car. Henry Beaver says, fun fact, the word sombrero comes from sombra, which is, is, means shade in Spanish. Ooh. The Shado. I'll make a new character named the Shado and see how long it takes before people come after me. <laughs> He's going to have a blue scarf <laughs> instead of a red one. <laughs> That's, what, <laughs> That's what we'll do. The unsuable Shado. That's what his name will be. <laughs> Oh shoot. Yep. Take that to court. Take that to court, dude. Get me some twinkies. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have any reference for the shadow here. Like I uh I probably botched a bunch of stuff in his in his in his uh costume here. Um but uh that's not bad for absolutely zero reference. Let me have a look at some reference and we'll see how close I got it. Okay, so I screwed up a little bit. He needs that long scarf. I think he's got, you know, he's got like a... 
So I need a long scarf. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna do a quick new thing here, and we're gonna actually try drawing a proper shadow kind of scarf thing. <laughs> Kenneth asks, anyone listen to Mr. Chameleon Radio? I've never heard of that. I think Von Klaus sounds like Snake. Yeah, Von Klaus. No, that, that's more like you know, the Wolverine. Like, Wolverine. Yeah. Hey, Scott. I hate you. I started going to Beetlejuice territory, isn't it? Come on, we're coming for your daughter, Chuck. <laughs> uh, anyone listen to Mr. Chameleon Radio? That's what Kenneth is asking. Any of you guys ever heard of that? Uh, Mr. Chameleon. This is from Archive. I found it. Uh, this is a radio show. So if you are looking to hear from some of this, what he's talking about, I'm assuming this is right. You can find it on archive.org or Internet Archive. It's similar to The Shadow, uh, he says. Nice good model. <laughs> Just looked it up. Cool old time radio. Yeah. So we got some Mr. Chameleon right here. You can find on Archive. You can find 23 half an hour episodes. I'll have to listen to that later. Um, I'll just bookmark that. Like that. See that? Bookmarked. Because um, I do like a bit of old time radio. It's absolutely no... no uh, absolutely no... <gasps> oh, no, dang it. Never mind. I thought it was uh, James Stewart was uh, the voice. I was like, oh, that'd be great. James Stewart is all only the... Uh, who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men. <laughs> shadow. You know, the shadow knows. He does. Yeah. And, uh, gosh, uh, the weed of crime, is, you know, it, it uh, bears bitter fruit. Because, uh, yeah, don't do, don't do that. No, don't go, go trying to take over the world or something. Because, uh, oh, I'll, you know, I'll stop you. That's what I'll do. <laughs> no, I, I used to listen to James Stewart in a, in a uh, Western radio show called Six Shooter. That was a pretty good pretty good western uh show um amanda says karma 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 chameleon <laughs> you come and go you come and go <laughs> i see what you did there sneaking some culture club up in here up into my my chats getting that boy george in there i get you i know all right let's see if i can draw a half decent actual shadow um all right here we go you ready I'm going to do this real fast now. This is professional stuff now, okay? Here we go. Bam! There's there. Now we, now we just go over here and we do this, right? <laughs> hey! It's just like that. Maybe if we do, we do this. <laughs> what if the <laughs> what if the chameleon's coat was made of chameleons? Think about it, dude. Praetor is coming up with the ringers. <laughs> oh shoot! That's AI. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's this is the shadow's gun with AI. Bam! Looks just like it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll tr we'll try for real. Okay, we'll try a quick shadow sketch for real. See if we can uh, see if we can figure something out. All right, the shadow. Let me just uh, let me just get a little reference here quick so I know what I'm doing and we'll get into a quick shadow sketch all right so start with the circle you remember those where it was like start with the circle put in a couple details and you're done Okay, 
let's see here. So we're gonna try this like serious now. Be serious. Got to get that like Jimmy Durante nose in there. Let's see here, I'm getting like a fedora. He's gonna he's gonna have it like it's gonna be like almost pilgrim shaped, I would think. Right. And he's got kind of some cheekbones a little bit there and uh and it's gonna kinda this is gonna just kind of show up. Some thicker eyebrows. Here. Hmm. You know, speaking of that's AI, I'm always told by 6 a.m. that I am an algorithm. So I guess maybe I'm just I'm just the AI that dreamed he was a man. Make the schnauz more beak like he says, you know, like, like a beak. He's a master of disguises. It's true. Chameleon. You know, that reminds me of um, chameleon reminds me a little bit the way you say it, like um, unknown soldier. You know, where he'd, he'd put on, like, just some random mask that he has. And you'd always know it was the unknown soldier because he's itching his face. I don't like this at all. Um, let's see here. Maybe we'll just do it like this. Like... There we go. Just a, you, you said beak-like, right? There we go. Just That looks just like it. <laughs> Perfect. Oh my gosh, I couldn't have couldn't have imagined it better. Just like that. <laughs> yeah, but but uh the um unknown soldier where you know he'd go in and he would disguise himself as like the general or something like that, and you would always know it was him because he was picking at his face. Uh and because it itched, the masks itched, right? So he uh he uh, would always eventually have to, you know, be found out and take it off and, and stuff like that. So shadow is a really tricky one to draw because it's just like, I don't, for whatever reason, like most people can't get the, uh... you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to draw him like, like Lee Van Cleef. You remember Lee Van Cleef? Like uh, good, the bad and the ugly. He had these beady little eyes. Right. And then you have these very pronounced. I think it's probably an aqualine nose that the shadow's got. Very Roman aqualine type nose. Yep. And then this this thing's gonna fall just just below the nose line, I think, probably. Kind of like that. And then you probably have the scarf going off. And this, I mean, give him this little little trick I learned with hats. You just do this like swoop like this, like this big S curve. That'll take care of it. Give him a bigger ear. I don't like that eye really. It always just kind of looks like a western to me, you know, like a. is usually closed yeah I'd have to sit with this one a little bit he changes color like a chameleon woman in the first predator yeah no I, I 
I uh, I had a lot of like the Blue Beetles from uh, radio shows, right? Uh, you had um, you had um, who was it? Um, Green Hornet was an old radio show. Batman and Superman, at least Superman had a, had a real popular radio show. You know, and I think Bruce Wayne would like make make uh, appearances as Batman. You know, Batman would come in as guest star and whatnot like that, um, which was kind of cool. But uh, there was also like the Whisper or the Whistler. Whistle, he whistle when he was when he was here. Um, There we go. A um, lot of old radio, like pulp radio shows, they used to be um, great for listening to and like kind of learning your writing a little bit. Just quick sketches. One day I'm going to sit down and I'm going to draw an honest to goodness. I've got a bunch of like like uh, honest to goodness drawings that I want to sit down and do like really quality drawings. The ones that kind of like take you like a couple of days to do uh, the shadows. One of them I'd like to do. I'd really like to sit down and, and I'm not just saying this cause you're here, Kenneth. I'd really like to sit down and do a, just a really nice 11 by 14, possibly watercolor, uh, broken sketch. Um, to do, or not just a broken sketch. I mean like a finished, a finished uh, detail. Maybe him and um, oh gosh, him and who am I? Uh, who am I thinking of here? Uh, Grunda, the tracker. I'm just a big, cool sketch of them facing off or something like that. I've been wanting to do that for a while. Uh, Kenneth says do it and I absolutely will I just got to get some time to sit down and, and get to the drawing desk and, and do that the acting on those radio shows was top notch says Citizen Ronan you're right like they knew how to keep you glued in the seat Henry Bemis says there was one I used to listen to with my dad called Tales of the Texas Rangers I know that one it's very good uh, lots of western shows back then and I believe on that what uh, last time I was on or the time or whatever I was on before that old time dot radio had Tales of Texas Rangers in it, in the Western section. I want to say. Because, um, I mean, with that one, let me see here. Oh, here, I'll show you this. Check this out. So you remember this site that I was showing you? So you can go into these uh, these three bars here, right? And you can, um, what are we doing? Select a channel. Can I get this this bigger? Hold on a second. All right. Old time dot radio. There we go. All right. So in here, yeah, you get your schedule. You can do the future horror, all that stuff. Um, so you've got the, which you could turn the visual visualizer to the sleep timer action shows. So you got like bold venture, which is a good one. That's a like bogey uh, counter spy. Love a mystery. John Steele adventures, Ranger Bale uh, adventures of Frank race Adventures of Superman, blue beetle, a Falcon, a uh, man called X, the Saint. Uh, okay, so comedy shows got great stuff. Abbott and Costello, Burns and Allen. I recommend that one. Um, lots of stuff here. Fred Allen show, Bob Hope show, uh, Martin Lewis, the Mel Blanc show, Phil Harris fix it. Uh, crime shows. Here we go. We got Boston Blackie's pretty good. Dragnet. Sam Spade's pretty good. Sam Spade. I think that was like. Um, you know, the um, Maltese Falcon uh, and the Big Sleep. That was the Sam Sp Spade stuff. Philip Marlowe. Or maybe that was Philip Marlowe. Might have been Philip Marlowe. Um, Sherlock Holmes. This is your FBI. Drama shows. We got NBC University Theater. Lux Radio Theater is really great. They do dramatizations of movies. Uh, Mercury Three Theater. That was Orson Welles' uh, deal. Um, future shows. Uh, I like... Uh, Dimension X, X minus one, 2000 plus are really good. Uh, horror shows. Okay, we got uh, Inner Sanctum's really great. Lights Out, awesome. Seal Book's pretty good. 
Uh, Haunting Hour is not bad, but I'd say Inner Sanctum and Lights Out are my two right here. Uh, classic Baseball, of course, sports shows. Uh, suspense shows. Do we have anything in here? CBO, uh, CBS Radio Mystery Theater is really good. Um, suspense. The suspense is really cool. X minus one is great. Uh, Sister Ronan says the shadow right there. Boom. Old time radio. The shadow and the whistler. They got those. Mysterious traveler. Um, that's a good one too. Western shows. There we go. Fer Fort Laramie. Frontier gentleman. Frontier town. Gunsmoke. Have gun will travel. Both very good. Texas Tales of the Texas Rangers is there. Lone Ranger. That's awesome. The six shooter. Personal favorite of mine. Um, Challenges of the Yukon. Command performance. Bing Crosby. Oh, the Bing Crosby show. Oh boy. Um, play the commercials. You can turn the commercials off or play them between the old like Lipton tea commercials and cigarette commercials and stuff like that. So any of these shows, if you just want to listen to Lone Ranger, you just click Lone Ranger. Maybe some Tales of the Texas Ranger, Gunsmoke. They'll just play those. You know, if you just want Lone Ranger, you put that on. They'll just play Lone Ranger. Or you just go to uh, Horror here, and you can quiet. You can go just kind of um, look at the schedule, and they they uh, they'll tell you what's on. Let's see if I, it'll come up. Okay, no. Um, but they'll tell you kind of what's on when it's on too. There's a, like a TV guide schedule here sort of thing. Um, hosted by or archive.org. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a ton of stuff here. Tons of stuff. If you like stories. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just not getting what I want right now. You know? It's not bad. It's not great. You gotta have... This is where we get all fancy, right? We do this. Right, we give the smoke, and then we would just dye everything back here black. Everything that that you know he would be would be black, and we just have the red coming out, and then the whatever's in the smoke, and the rest of the black is a silhouette. Is how we do it. If I were doing this like a like an actual like piece or something like that, right? And then you just get this little bit of his face. That's how we do it. But we do have this. That's a good night. <laughs> so I think we'll probably leave it there. An hour and eight in. That's that's pretty good. We're gonna have the chit tomorrow. And as a reminder, I'll play the the intro that's coming up tomorrow again. Here we go. One, two, three. Beep, 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 beep. A Radio Stat Zero broadcast. Whoa, whoa, hold on. That's not what the show is. Let's go get it. So that's coming up tomorrow on this channel. Um, I'll sit and talk about some of the polls we got, some couple of topics, just to kind of make it feel a little bit more like home on Saturday night when the when the chat is on hiatus. So uh, you guys have a great rest of your night. Thank you very much for coming in and hanging out with me. I'm glad you guys didn't totally forget about my channel after my absence for a few days going into uh, going into hibernation. Henry Bemis says nice. Sister Rona says that intro was the chit. Same time, Kenneth, same time, 6 o'clock uh, Central, so 7 Eastern and 5 
five, I believe five Pacific. Same time, same time. We're going to try to keep it as, as uniform as possible. So, uh, hey, have a great night. Thank you guys for showing up. And uh, I will see you when I see you next. Thank you.